Good morning and a very happy Christmas to you from St John the Baptist Greenhill. Now I don't know because I'm recording this in advance whether it's a sunny day, a white Christmas, a horrible grey wet day or, what, or even if Boris, John, Boris Johnson has cancelled Christmas altogether. So I'm blissfully unaware of what today is really like but nevertheless we can celebrate the glorious truth of the incarnation of God in Jesus Christ and that is what we are here to celebrate and explore the reality of that in our lives. So let us begin our service with a short moment of silence and a prayer. Our Father in heaven we thank you that this glorious day you have visited us with your presence and made yourself known to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. May you bless this day to us and our families in whatever circumstances we find ourselves. In your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. The first thing I'm going to do is light this candle, which is the white candle in what would normally be our Advent wreath and this is the one that we would light uh, in church. We've had four candles so far, all of them purple, and they have charted for us God's salvation plan. And we've journeyed from Abraham and the patriarchs through to the prophets, through to John the Baptist and then to Jesus' mother Mary. And today our candle signifies the culmination of the salvation plan of God made from all ages in his son Jesus Christ. So let's light our final candle and then we'll commence the service with a prayer. I'd ask you to join with me in the response. Let us pray. God our Father, Today the Saviour is born, and those who live in darkness are seeing a great light. Help us who greet the birth of Christ with joy, to live in the light of your Son, and to share the good news of your love. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who has come into the world. Amen. We pray together. Lord Jesus, light of light, you have come among us. Help us who live by your light to shine as lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Well, what we will now do is uh, say some words of confession and penitence and ask God to forgive us for those things that we have done which are wrong. So hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Therefore let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You, Jesus, are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. So may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray, Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him. And as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may be daily renewed by your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
And now we're going to have two readings, one from the book of Isaiah and the other from the Gospel of Luke. And then a reflection, um, a short word on those readings. And then we'll say our profession of faith as we uh, share the creed together before we take the sacrament. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration, and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, over the course of uh, Advent, we've been following the usual Advent themes, and as I've been going through them, I've noticed a little emergent theme. It certainly wasn't deliberate, just something that came out. In Advent 3, we focused on John the Baptist, and I picked these three words to summarise John's message, and those words were, I am not. John knew who he wasn't and he knew who he was pointing to and that was Jesus Christ. And then last week, last Sunday, um, we took the theme of Mary, the obedient mother of Christ. And her three words were, here I am. So I am not and here I am. And today, Christmas Day, It's not what we say, but what God says. And it's in the name given to Jesus, which is Emmanuel, God with us. I am not, here I am, and God with us. In the Gospels it says, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And at this time of year, what we focus on, is this truth that Emmanuel, God with us, is about God being with humanity. And it is just a good thing to focus on that because it can all blend into the words that we sing, the words that we read and become just a regular Christmas thing. Because God with us is something very special indeed and perhaps we feel the need of it more this year than any other so what does Emmanuel mean well what does it mean for me it means that in this expression of God's love for the world it's not that we go to be with him at least not until we die it's not that we enter a separate world of disengagement separation from the world It's not that we have the troubles of the world removed from us. It's not that we become so heavenly minded that we're of no earthly use. And we're not led magically out of this earthly situation to be with God in a perfect place away from trouble. Emmanuel, 
means what it says. It's God with us. It's God coming to be with us in this situation. And that is important to understand. Neither we nor the situation are going to be removed. Rather, God comes to us to be with us in it. God is with us in the season of COVID-19. God is with us in the season of economic woe. God is with us in Brexit. God is with us in family separation and isolation. And that is important to know that God said, I am coming to be with you and share in those types of travail and trouble and sadness and grief and pressure, as well as all the happy things. It needs to be more than just words, though, doesn't it? Otherwise, it just sounds like a phrase. So let's look at what it might mean. Firstly, God with us is what Christmas is. So amidst everything else, whatever else you do in this season of Advent, Christmas and Epiphany, whatever else you do, it is about God being with us. That is the meaning of the season. Christmas is God affirming us, affirming creation, repeating what God said in creation, that it's all very good, and also affirming you in your humanity. God created the world to have choice. He made nature free and autonomous and to run according to its laws. He made man free and autonomous to run according to his choices. And that is inherent in the way we were made. There's nothing wrong with that. No matter what bad choices man subsequently makes, God never abandoned him. Although man had to leave the garden, God left the garden with him and has always been alongside us. And in Christmas, he comes and does the final ultimate step of becoming human himself to embrace, affirm and approve all that being human means. God is saying in and through Christmas, and I don't know whether you've ever thought of it this way, this God is saying, what you are is what I made you, and I know you mess up, but I am joining you in that mess and will help you, because that's what good fathers do. Now, our picture of God does not always present him that way, but that is what Christmas is. If you ever wondered what Christmas really is about, it's about God saying, hang on, I am entering the fray. I am in this with you. The second thing I want to say is this, that God with us still applies. God is still with us. I mentioned, or I will mention something about Easter later on, believe it or not. It's heading towards us at a pace, at least Lent and Ash Wednesday is. But just after Easter, we will celebrate something else called Pentecost, which is arguably for us even more significant because that is the point at which God comes and dwells within us all the time. The point of Christmas is that God shares our human limitations, our pain, our sorrow and our grief. And by coming in spirit, he offers to be with us in it, to sustain us, empower us, guide us and then change us, make us more to be like Jesus. Help us to grow in wisdom, in holiness and in all things transform us into something new. And that present day ongoing relationship is what I call Christianity. You may have a different view, but that's what I call Christianity. It's not God up there or God over there in that church or at that altar. It's God within me and within you. It's prayer, it's worship, it's making good choices every day. It's asking God for things, it's listening to God, it's hearing his voice and changing my choices as I grow to know him better. When we sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel, O come to us, abide with us, our Lord, Emmanuel, that is really what we mean. Come and be with me today, inside me. Change me, make me better. Make me do better things, think better thoughts. In 2020, we learned 
that despite all our feelings of self-sufficiency, our wealth, our busy lives, our houses, our cars and all that we are, we need God with us. Now for 2021, how about remembering that right from the start? The joyous, uplifting truth that though it may be hard and although it may be difficult sometimes to see, God is with us. My prayer for you is that amongst what we may call church and religion and faith, and amidst huge personal challenges in the year to come, we may rediscover the reality of the literal truth of God with us. So there you are, three little words. I am not, says John the Baptist. Here I am, says Mary. And I love you, says God. God with us. Happy Christmas and a truly blessed new year. May God bless you in all that you do. Let's pause and pray before we move on in our service. Come Lord, come again. Come Lord, your wounded world is yearning for you to come again. Come Lord, your weary world is crying out for you to lift us up out of our despair, our hunger, our thirst for something better and our need for the food that will last. Come Lord, come again. We need to begin again. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Amen. So as we meditate upon those words, let us declare our faith in God. We say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll now have some prayers of intercession, which will be led for us. Let us pray. Father, as we come before you on Christmas Day, when the Word of God become flesh, please open our hearts to listen and feel your love among us. Dear Lord, thank you for being with us on this joyful day where we gather together to celebrate the birth of Jesus and to spend time to share with each other. We pray for our church leaders, Barry, AJ and David, who have always prepared to love and serve and to comfort us whenever we reach out. May we also give thanks to everyone that prepare and organize the online church meeting during the lockdown and to those who help to reopen the church to make sure the place is safe for worship. Thank you to our families whom we share our daily lives with in good times and bad. We seek strength from our family members, including our extended families from church to get us through the worrying times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever living God, on this Christmas morning, we remember your dear son was born in a dangerous and troubled world that we can draw similarity with at a time of pandemic and a huge political uncertainty. May you bless our medics, nurses and carers. Give them strength to care for the weak and the sick when the nation is at the center of the second wave. Bless the families to be safe so that they can focus on the job during this busy and stressful time. Bless also the families of the sick to be strong during this time and to continue to give comfort to them. May you look after our community key workers whom dutifully carry out daily necessary work to keep the society working. During Christmas holidays, relax of lockdown, when students and relatives are traveling back home, may you give us wisdom and strong self-discipline so that the virus are contained and not spread to other family members. Thank you for the scientists, researchers and regulators 
whom had worked tirelessly for the multiple vaccines, bless us the ability to understand how balancing of safety and mass vaccination works, so that immunities within our communities can be achieved sooner, to shield vulnerable whom cannot get the vaccine due to health conditions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, we pray for the country's leaders and policymakers. May you give them clear hats to listen to businesses and people's worries, have the courage to be honest, to understand the importance of love thy neighbor as yourself, so that they can make realistic and sensible judgments to take the country forward to the future. We pray for social justice and equality. We pray for the homeless to be able to get help. The asylum seekers can settle safely. The poor and those who have lost their jobs can get financial help to carry on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, as the three wise men studied the planets, interpreting the meaning behind cosmic events, and followed the stars to find you. May Lord guide us to make our world a better place, where we love our planet, love all the living creatures, to live sustainably, to serve nature, to conserve nature, and love one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we are coming to the last week of this year, may we feel hope and have time to get close to you, to listen to your word, to follow your call. And be a better person for all the people and living creatures around us. May we be more like you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for leading us in those prayers. We're now going to share the sacrament together,、uh, which is the culmination of our celebration of Jesus coming to be with us. Before that, and as part of that, we will share the peace with each other, which is difficult to do. It's been difficult to do all of this year, but we still do it because we believe we are one body in Christ. So let us share the peace with one another. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Now, as we prepare to take the Eucharist, we're going to have a short musical item,、um, a, a time of worship together, just to reflect before we come to the table. You may want to get the bread and wine ready if、uh, you want to participate. Uh, with us in taking of bread and wine. So let us first listen and contemplate. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born, while shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night. Behold, through our veils, there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mount. Over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. With a lowly manger, where humble Christ was born, and 
and God sends us salvation this blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. So we now gather around the table to share in the body and blood of Christ, God's Son, sent to die for us. Word made flesh, life of the world. In your incarnation, you embraced our poverty. By your spirit, may we share in your riches. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours, always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who for love of our fallen race humbled himself and was born on this day of the Virgin Mary by the power of your Spirit and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, shared it with them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a cup of wine. Again he gave you thanks, shared it, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, as we remember all that Jesus did, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth and your kingdom comes. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to be with you forever at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ 
and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. The Son of God took flesh among us as a child, that we might become in spirit and truth the children of God. Therefore with gratitude and joy we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, Emmanuel, God with us, born of Mary, to be the Saviour of all nations. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, whose word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds. Through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now just before the notices we'll have a short item of music just to meditate upon and dwell in the moment as we remember the birth of Christ.
Well, just um, a couple of notices before we conclude our service and receive God's blessing. Um, firstly, um, a very merry, happy and happy Christmas to you. I really mean that. I hope that you will be um, with family or friends to some degree over the next few days. Um, please stay safe, obey the guidelines and look after yourselves. Secondly, there will be no midweek services this week. So Tuesday and Wednesday, we will not have our usual uh, Compline and communion. But we will restart as normal on January the 3rd. So next Sunday, um, we will be back in church as normal. This Sunday, the 27th, there will be a nine o'clock service only in church. And that's if you want to come and receive communion, uh, there will be a communion service there for you. But we will, be, we will not be online at 10.30 as we normally would be. But from January the 3rd, we will begin as normal. Then we'll be back into a new rhythm um, as we lead inexorably to Lent, which, believe it or not, is only about six weeks away. So uh, there we are. We're already almost on the road to Easter. Well, with that in mind, shall we pause? quieten our hearts, think about the truth of God with us and how in the year to come we're going to make that a reality. Let us pause and then I will speak the blessing to us all. The Lord be with you. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. As witnesses of God's glory and heralds of God's peace, go forth in joy and gladness to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. A good day to you. A very happy Christmas and God bless you all. Amen.